episode of the Fantasy Football Picks and Bet Show on the Mayo Media Network. I am your host, Scott Simpson. As always, we are presented by Prize Picks. Sign up for Prize Picks using the link in the description below, code MMN, of course, for the Mayo Media Network. You get your deposit doubled up to $100. We say it every week, basically free money. Uh, and while you're at it, while you're here, like, subscribe to the Mayo Media Network on YouTube. Come on. Jingle that bell. Give us a thumbs up or a, a like or something, right? We need some feedback. Uh, I'm back again this week with my guy, LQ. We did it all regular season long. They, they broke us up. We were too powerful. They had to bring us back for the Super Bowl. Uh, the Real Deal Fancy on Twitter. How you doing, brother? What's going on, Scott? We are back for the fire content. And yes, it is Super Bowl week and my boys are playing this week. Let's go. I, there is definitely a correlation there. We've been talking Rams kind of off the cuff all year. You've been the Rams expert. Now we're here in the big dance. So uh, we're going to get your kind of game flow theory, what it's going to look like, how this game is going to unfold a little bit later as we get into our picks. So we'll kind of break those down. But right now we're going to roll into our prize picks. Great segue there. Uh, we're going to roll through our favorite picks this week. I had a few last week. They've changed the game on me. So we talked a little last week about, uh, you know, our guy Von Miller, uh, 0.75 sack. They changed it up to a whole sack. So the lines are always moving uh, across the board. Pay attention. Get in when the getting is good. Uh, let's jump right in right now. Uh, we'll start with the two quarterbacks uh, over on Price Picks. Matthew Stafford, the ageless vet, right, traded this year in the offseason from Detroit uh, versus the second-year quarterback, Joe Burrow. Uh, who are you leaning towards in this matchup? Who has a better game overall? Uh, overall, I think we got to give it to Matthew Stafford. Um, the guy's throwing over 300 yards. Last game he put up on San Fran. 270 is low. I, I definitely love both of these guys. And 265, I definitely think Burrow can hit the over here. So I'm torn between the two, but obviously I got to go with my boy Matthew Stafford. He's thrown for at least 300 yards this week. Yeah, I know that, you know, you have a much vaunted two uh, secondary there in L.A. So if you're leaning one or the other, Matt Stafford, probably a better chance to do it. Now, there's a, a chance where Stafford's uh, Rams are blowing out and, and Joe Burrow kind of in the, in the you know, kind of garbage time, as I like to say, has mm -hmm. to put some some yards together. Could happen that way. But if it's a back and forth game, I do think Joe Burrow stays under that number. I'm kind of staying away. Um, well, what do you think about the passing touchdowns? They're both set at two. Right. So you, you got to get three to win here. Uh, do you think either one of them does hit three or is this a kind of a, a maybe a nice cushion to go under? This might be a cushion to go under. I, I think uh, it would be a stretch if we we're going to go with either or them hitting a three. It's definitely risky. I mean, Joe Mixon can run one in and Cam Akers can run some in. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm banking on the running backs to get involved in this game to find their way into the end zone. Not necessarily Matthew Stafford or Joe Burrow, you know, throwing long shots to Cooper Cup or Jamar Chase, et cetera, et cetera, whatever the case may be. So definitely going to sit here with the under for both of these guys. Yeah, I, th th those are not going to be the cornerstones of my my parlay ticket, as they say. That's going to be risky. That's what's going to be that just destroys you. <laughs> For sure. Um, well, let's talk about something maybe it's a little bit more predictable. You know, the completions, pass attempts, uh, you know, both of uh, Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow, 24. Uh, Joe Burrow's got the hook on it, 24 and a hook. Uh, and then when yeah. it comes to pass attempts, 35.5 for Stafford, 36.5 for Joe Burrow. Any kind of leverage you see in that matchup? Um, I do like I do like pass completions for Joe Burrow. Um, the hook doesn't scare me at all. I think he obviously he'll get into the 30s. He might get 28. Let's be exact. He might get 28. I do not like the attempts, though. That's a lot of throwing and that's them honestly playing from behind. So it is possible. But I think this is going to be a really good game. I don't think it's going to be one of those games where they're going to be catching up down like two touchdowns trying to go downfield aggressive. I think this is going to be a back and forth game. Hmm. Yeah, with that being said, too, who is more likely to turn the football over, right? They got a nice little dangling 0.5 for both quarterbacks here. So it's both, they're both in play, they're both live. Uh, I'm leaning Stafford. I don't want to, you know, sully the good man's name. What do you think? He, he did have more uh, interceptions this year than Burrow did. Absolutely, Stafford. He's going to play some hero ball. I, it's a big stage. And I, I'm not going to say that he's going to be nervous or he's going to be off his game and it's going to be in his head. It's just that he's going to have a moment where he's going to try to play the hero, which we see all the time. I mean, look, against the 49ers, that should have been an interception and the game should have went the other way, honestly. But that was just him trying to be hero to find Odell Beckham down the field and thrown into double coverage. So this is likely to happen. Hopefully it's not in the fourth quarter or any Thing that needs to be clutch hopefully he gets it in the first quarter get it out of the way and you cash in on Matthew Stafford getting that interception 
Yeah, I love those half, uh, you know, those point five interception bets, touchdown yeah. bets. You get them out of the way early. Uh, I think Stafford is good for one. You seem to just have those knucklehead interceptions where he's not just trying to play hero ball. It's just I, I got to do something and get this ball out of my hands before I take a sack. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, but just take a sack, bro. That's all. Just take a sack. It's he's okay. Been flawless against the blitz, and it's like those, like you said, those balls where he just wants to get out of his hand. Mm-hmm. I'd rather you just take the sack, man, please, so we could punt it or whatever the case may be. Because he's just so reckless. Yeah, well, I think he'll be a little bit tame in this. You know, he he does mm-hmm. have uh, the best wide receiver in the game this year in Cooper Cup. So that, that should be a little bit of a steadying force. Uh, and then Joe Burrow, man, I'm not going to bet against Joe Burrow here. Joe Cool, Joe Shiesty, whatever you want to say. He's one of the coolest MFers. Can we say that now? Uh, on, on, uh, uh, you know, on our MMN airwaves. I hope we can. But Joe Burrow is the man. So I'm not going to bet on interception. Uh, anything can happen, but I'm going to kind of stay away from that. Um, yep. All right, let's let's transition to rushing yards. They, they have five props out. They added a Jamar Chase prop, which I, I like that. That's, that's cute, right? They got a 3.5 Jamar Chase rushing prop. What do you think about the, the you know, quarterbacks? You got Stafford, 4.5, Joe Burrow, 9.5. Uh, you're leaning either one of these guys, or are you going to head to the running backs? I'm going to go straight to the running backs. Jamar Chase is cute with the three and a half. I don't know why they did that. I guess it's one jet sweep or something behind the line of scrimmage, but whatever the case may be, I'm fading that all the way to hell. But um, I'm definitely looking at Cam Akers. I'm looking at Joe Mixon. They're very similar, 57 in the hook and then 85 in the hook. I'm honestly going to lean Joe Mixon here to get it done on the ground. Um, Cam Akers, he's going to be, you know, in and out swapping with Sony Michelle. I can honestly see him and Sony Michelle have a clean split, but I don't see 57 in the hook for, you know, Cam Akers to be like this workhorse guy. So I'm leaning more towards, you know, Joe Mixon hit the over here. Yeah, uh, was his rushing average 1.8 last game or something like that? I don't know. I'm just – this postseason, yeah. he's 2.9 or something like that. Not good. So, yeah. It's no. not that great right now. No. It's just looking good when he gets those, like, when he gets skinny in the hole and he gets those extra yards, but it's not consistent. Right. I mean, if he busts one for, you know, 50 yards, then, you know, the, all, all bets are off. But I don't necessarily see that happening. But you know what? I didn't see the Washington football team then, another name, uh, with Timmy Smith running all over the Denver Broncos back in, you know, decades ago. So you never know. Um, I do like Joe Mixon here, though, and, and but the bet is, or the or the the you know the play for me is the touchdown, the point five. Uh, I do think Joe Mixon is more likely than Cam Akers to get into the end zone. So if you're pushing for a touchdown, you know, get get yourself some Joe Mixon. That that's my lean. I'm not gonna make it the, like the cornerstone, but it is a nice add-on piece. Maybe bet three or four if I'm stacking a big nice bet up. Yeah, I'm stacking the rushing yards and I'm stacking the touchdown for Joe Mixon. To be honest, you know, our linebackers can't tackle that's what it comes down to and joe mixon's a a top 10 you know guy breaking tackles top five maybe i i have to check that stat but he he's known to be breaking tackles he's not going down on the first contact and with our linebackers not being able to tackle you know he's likely to bust off for a touchdown yeah that 58 and a hook is in jeopardy as well all right, let's talk about some receiving yards. We've got some of the best receivers in the game. I think it's really cool. You've got Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, two stars this year, two top five wideouts in fantasy for sure. Uh, going head to head here, uh, not really against each other, but it's in this matchup being showcased. Uh, are you leaning Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase? Where where does the action go? Or, or are you kind of going the understory here? Odell Beckham Jr., you know, T. Higgins. you got a bunch of other uh, kind of subsidiary companies that might kind of bu- bust out here. Yeah, um, I'm definitely going to lock in Cooper Cup for the one-on-one in the hook. He's going to go crazy. Yeah, I feel as though we've been seeing a pattern where, you know, he's able to just bust off a long touchdown or just have like 12 catches for 144 yards. You know, it's very possible. But I'm going to lean the under here for Odell Beckham. I don't think that uh, he's going to be a huge, huge factor in this game. They're going to find a way to get him out of the game because they've seen that he's still – sneaky good because when he's wide open he's making plays so i think the game plan you know try to keep you know Odell beckham to a minimum that might be something that can happen so i'll take the under here for the 60 and hook. Mm, i like it so likes the cooper cup fading the odell beckham jr uh, i talked about it last week the, the the tyler boyd 36 and a hook I, I liked it a little bit more before i saw uh you know uh, the the undertaker slash cj uzoma take off the brace at the press conference <laughs> I, I was just like what oh so i think he wants to play i was yeah just he's back he's alive um uh, what do you think though about these Bengals receiving options is there anywhere you're leaning i mean jamar chase probably gonna get 
a little bit of the Ramsey treatment, you think, uh, leaving kind of T. That's Higgins fair. possibly. Yeah, how's it going to go? It, it may go T. Higgins. T. Higgins might open up that middle and destroy our linebackers and be able to find some open space there. And Jamar Chase, he scares me because – Jalen Ramsey, he's locked in. It's another day in the office for him. It's just another Sunday game. It's nothing too special. He's not worried about the bright lights and the big stage. Jalen Ramsey's locked in. And I think, you know, we've seen Jalen Ramsey take out some of the big stars, DK Metcalf, DeAndre Hopkins, the list goes on. So I think Jamar Chase is just another guy on the list that he's probably going to lock up. So if you're going to be looking to take the over here, you're really gambling right now. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I was leaning more Tyler Boyd. I might be putting my chips more so in the T Higgins basket. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at Higgins definitely. Yeah, 65 and hook, very manageable. Uh, and maybe if you're if you're not comfortable with that, maybe looking at his reception total, which we'll get to in a little bit as well. Uh, that's a nice manageable. I think it's like five or six. So, um, any other of these uh, players that stood out? You know, Cam Akers 11.5. I I would love this if he wasn't a little banged up and, and maybe doing a timeshare with Sony Michelle. How do you see this kind of playing out? Um, it's definitely going to be a timeshare when it comes to receiving yards. That's acres rule. Um, I'm not really looking at him for PPR, but I like some AJP Ryan. I, I like the eight and a half. That looks like I can, I can play that and he can get that because we've seen him take like two screens last game and ended up taking one to the house. So it's like, Oh, okay. You get involved in third downs when Joe Mixon's a little winded, that can easily be something that we can see happening. And again, our linebackers cannot tackle. So he's likely to get more than eight and a half yards. I love that. That's a nice little sneaky play. I'm going to put that in my back pocket for myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, everybody else here on Price X, please sign up. MMN, get your 100 bucks. I'm trying to get my 100 bucks too. A couple hundred bucks actually uh, with these bets. All right, let, let's jump down. We talked about, we teased it up here. A little bit of the reception action here. Not, not over the top, honestly. I thought these would be higher. I think Cooper Cups were a whole reception higher last week. I think they were nine. Now it's at eight. Yeah. Cooper Cup, eight. Jamar Chase, six. Beckham is at five, Higgins at five. Oh, I love Higgins at five. I think that might be my play this week. Where are you leaning in this cornucopia? Are you going to take every player here if they actually get all of their the pass completions in this all game? Shoots? Good, man. I like Van Jefferson, two catches. He's likely to put up three. I definitely like, you know, T. Higgins. I'm right there with you with that five. That just looks juicy. That looks like it's going to happen in the first two quarters, to be honest. So I'm definitely riding that T. Higgins, and I'll throw in some Van Jefferson as well for that three catches. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm not against the Cam Akers too, but if you are uh, using Cam Akers uh, the way that I think the Rams want to, they're not going to be passing that much. They'll be running. That's, that's yeah. kind of the goal. They'll be running the football. So mm -hmm. that might be a fade uh, for me. And then Tyler Boyd, I did love his four last week. I, I don't love it, but uh, I think I love the Higgins a little bit more uh, in this scenario. Gonna get right. Exactly four. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, we talked about receiving touchdowns, which I thought were interesting last week. Cooper Cup still at a one, right? So you have to get two to win if you're going to go one, if yeah. you're going the, the over, right? Uh, Jamar Chase at 0.5. Are you fading both of these? One of these, which one would you kind of, uh, and by fading, I mean betting the under, betting against in this case. Ah, man, um, I'm, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to fade Cooper Cup. Mm, 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 mm. That's tough. Hard That's to tough. say. It's hard to say. It is. It's hard to say. Um, I do like Jamar Chase. I can see him scoring one. Um, I'm not going to say that Ramsey's going to lock him up 100%, maybe 85%, but it's likely we've seen, you know, Tom Brady hit Mike Evans down the line for, you know, his last passing touchdown of his career before mm -hmm. retiring. And that happened in garbage time. That happened at the end of the game. So it's like one of those things where you get lucky. You know, it's unexpected. You know, that could be a Jamar Chase uh, situation. Yeah, I think I would rather bet the chase than the Cooper Cup just because, you know, you got to get double to, to get that one cashed in there. So, all right. Uh, th there were some other really interesting prize picks this week. Uh, normally, there's not a plethora in, in this sense, but there was a couple of other favorites that we, we kind of picked from now. So if you go to prize picks, I think there's over maybe 25 or something prize picks. There's a bunch of them, right? So, you know, yeah, quarter, yeah, you got uh, interceptions we talked about, quarterback completion percentage, quarterback rating, field goals made, longest field goal, longest punts. So we pulled a couple of our favorite. We're calling them our Super Bowl specials. Uh, so uh, let's lead off with one of yours, LQ. What, what is a Super Bowl special that you like that's kind of maybe an off-the-wall bet this week? Well, I'm looking at the Rams QB hits, first of all. Sick. Ooh. Just six. Okay. This is obviously free money here. This is absolutely going to happen for the simple fact 
the Bengals O line is terrible. I mean, Burrow's the number one most sack quarterback in the league this season. So it's just only going to get worse. It's just going to get bad. I really feel as though this is free money here. You have to smash the over. Yeah, I, I love that as well. We, we were laughing pre show about that one. And uh, you better bet it quick before Price Fix yeah. catches wind. And I think we're going to turn this six upside down to nine. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I, and that's just a hit. You know they're going to hit him. This is the Super Bowl. People are going to be amped up to hit Joe Burrow. And he took nine sacks in the Tennessee game. I don't know how many hits he took. It was over 10. So I know he got hit more times. So, uh, yeah, no, I like this. And that was not against Aaron Donald and, you know, Floyd, everybody else they have, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, not not, not good. So, all right. uh, There's another one that I like that was in that plethora of picks. It was Matthew Stafford's completion percentage. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit. He has been interception prone at times, but he's had one of his better completion percentage years uh, with Sean McVay. I love what he's doing. It's at 69%. Oh, it's just so juicy. Mm-hmm. Right, 69%. I'm going to take, take over. And here's my thought, right? Sean McVay, been here, done that. He lost a tight game to the Patriots already. I, I think he understands the importance of kind of getting the ball downfield. Uh, and Matthew Stafford will be throwing the football in this game. Uh, so I'm not worried about him. 70%, he can do that. So that's where I'm leaning in this. The Bengals defense, though stout, right? Though they did stop the Chiefs in the second half, that was voodoo, right? Let's just be I honest. don't know. That was rigged. Yeah. That was some, that was some, you know, I don't know, Brittany Matthews voodoo or something that was brought up on. So, uh, yeah, I, I do like that. Uh, any other of those uh, Super Bowl specials that you're leaning towards? Um, man, there, there's so many. And like, you, you really look at this stuff and it's like free money when you look at like, let's, let's go over a few real quick. I'm looking at the punts, like Johnny Hecker, three and a half, and then H- Hubert, three and a half so obviously i'm leaning more towards the Bengals punting more which i honestly see happening so i'm going to take the over here for kevin huber, huber for three and a half punts and looking at four four five you know punts yeah i like that yeah people get a little nervous particularly you know rookie second year players i could see a little bit of the jitters coming in the first couple of uh, possessions first couple of series uh, i'll tell you one that i love is the rams tackle for a loss 4.5 Right. I know that their linebackers, you know, maybe not the best, but uh, you do have corners that can come up. You also have, you know, Eric Weddle, he's only 79 years old, right? He can come up. Uh, and then any Aaron Donald penetration, you got to say penetration at least once a show. That's contractually <laughs> obligated, right? Uh, no more. Yeah, I, yeah, I like this 4.5 uh, sat t- uh, tackles for a loss behind the line of scrimmage for the Rams. Very doable in this matchup. Definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm right with you. And yeah, there will be penetration. He will, he will be getting sacked. He will be getting hit for a loss. <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. Uh, and if you have not already, please go do sign up for prize picks code MM and get the free hundred bucks, right? Like that's just how it goes. You get the hundred bucks and then you can uh, unleash it upon your Super Bowl picks, build a bunch, right? I like to do the five uh, team you know, kind of parlays, build five games up there. Uh, you know, and, and you get 10 times your money. I love all that kind of stuff. And if you lose, it's okay. You don't lose all your money uh, if you get a couple right. So uh, I love it. MMN is prize picks. Uh, and I'm so excited, by the way. This is our last game of the season. Uh, I can't believe we're already here. This is this is crazy. So uh, we're not going to be doing this every single week like this from now on. Uh, but do check us out. Uh, I think it's every couple weeks we'll be doing this. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited that, that we get to call the last game and talk about it. Uh, before we get into that, because we're going to tease people here. We're not going to give it to them straight. Uh, we're going to talk a little dynasty with your boy, Cooper Cup, right? You are a Rams aficionado. You've been on Cooper Cup all year. I've been listening to you. But I want to hear the case being made for folks uh, right now who are being offered a lot of picks to sell him, right? A lot of capital to sell. Why are you holding Cooper Cup in Dynasty? Why are you not getting rid of him? Because for me, I think I'm cashing in. What do you see in him that says this is not going to be a one-time thing? Like you're, you're looking at Cooper Cup right now. He's breaking records. He's in a great situation. The offense is hitting on all cylinders. For you to want to sell right now will just be silly because you're not going to get any type of good return. You're getting some unknown picks for a guy who's going to be doing this for the next three to four years, as long as he's a Ram and Matthew Stafford stays there. And this system is locked in and it's working very well. And the thing is, it's not like it's a foreign thing where we see Cooper Cup as a top five wide receiver. He finished, you know, wide receiver five, you know, 
in 2019. This isn't something that hasn't happened before. And we've seen he can excel in a Sean McVay offense. I mean, you know, he had this rookie year injury and then boom, he's top five wide receiver <laughs> it's almost unheard of and then a couple of years later you break records like you get the triple crown you shouldn't be selling a guy just based off you know the hype around him and everybody's like looking to get him i'm saying hold for the simple fact you're going to get this same recipe for the next couple of years like there's not going to be any you know pick or any player that you'll get in return that you'll feel like hey i don't feel like i got swindled i don't feel like it, you're gonna get swindled you're getting an empty bag of chips that's basically what you're getting in return you're getting mccaffrey right if you if you don't McCaff- you see these trades a couple years ago they'd be like my, my my sister my mom and my whole house for christian mccaffrey people be like not enough man not yeah. enough <laughs> throwing your dog throwing your dog bro mm-hmm. and, and christian mccaffrey's been hurt right for a long time which is the you know the uh, epitome of don't do that. Uh, what I love about Cooper Cup is he's not going to be in that same role where he's going to get hit and hurt, and he's not in that run- running backs. There's nutrition for them, whereas wide receivers they're a lot healthier. And the way the Cooper Cup plays, you're he's not getting you know, yeah. bamboozled, man. That guy is getting out of bounds. He is dare I say nimble. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> <laughs> very nimble. Uh, and, and listen, he almost had 2,000 receiving. I'm arguing for you. I got to stop. Okay, I'll say this. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it's supposed to go i'm i'm, I'm on the other side I say hello or you I agree with me uh, son of a i kind of do because i have him in the dynasty league but then on the other hand it, this is what it comes down to if you're going to be in a position to win next year with cooper cup if he gives you an opportunity to win a championship you you hold but if yeah. you if you are just the trash of the league right if you finished in the bottom half and you need those picks uh, i would say go for players over picks right look for some players uh, maybe who have been uh, changing situations. Uh, maybe they have a depressed quarterback where you yeah. know that their value is going to come up. Uh, you know, I don't know, Michael Pittman, some other you know, players like that. I would look for, for second year and third year players, uh, you know, the Deontay Johnsons of the world. If you can get those players uh, who there's some turmoil because their quarterback might not be who they think it's going to be, whatever it is. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would say, I would say sell Cooper cup if the right price comes along. Uh, and I would say that price would be two picks and two players. That's how I would do it. It's got to be a nice oh. price. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I'm Christian McCaffreying him. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, I, I hear you. I agree. I agree to an extent, though. Like, I feel so we cannot be making our league mates better because you got to think about the person who's going to be getting him in return. He's going to be building around him. And you got to look at the price you paid for Cooper Cup, depending when you did your startup or whatever you paid basically like a huge discount and you paid discount based on you thought Jared Goff was still going to be the quarterback. So it's like, come on, you got to build, you got to hold, you got to build around Cooper cup. I understand you want to get the picks in return, but try to sell somebody else. Try to sell a running back. Running backs are hot right now. Like Mm -hmm. zero running back guys are just clapping it up right now. It's just crazy. But I definitely feel as though, you know, you can build around Cooper cup to where it's like, he will be your star player and hold as long as you get. Yeah, I, on that team that I have Cooper Cup, I also have Debo Samuel. I, oh, I, I know, I know. I won. Old. I won. I'm a winner. I don't yeah. want to you know, be mean to other people this year, but I did kick yeah. their asses. So, no, I'm with you too. Uh, ultimately, I do say hold. Um, but if the right price comes along, make sure that you're willing to fleece somebody. Uh, you know who you can fleece in your league. There's always the guy. You know your league mates. Yeah, you know your tennis. There's two people in my league I always fleece. Always yeah. finesse you. <laughs> well, let me just say, if you were in my league, I would fleece you because I would sell you Cooper Cup right now for an exorbitant <laughs> amount of picks. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I sold. <laughs> we're even deal. Selling him. All right. Now, all right. I appreciate that banner. Uh, you have a, an expert in LQ who is saying hold. I would say hold as well. You, you've argued me over. Uh, Thank so you. <laughs> let's do a little kind of quick hitters. We're going to talk a few ADP risers. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and this is, you know, in dynasty, but then also just overall stock up. I want to yeah. know, is that stock going to hit dividends or is it going to kind of, you know, AMC on you and, go, and, and crash next year in the market. So let's talk, uh, we'll go quarterback running back and then we'll hit some wide receivers and we'll, we'll jump mm-hmm. over to our Super Bowl picks and get out of here. So, all right, Joe Burrow, uh, Joe Shiesty himself. Where do you see him going next year? Uh, is he a top five pick? I mean, him and Jamar Chase, effing ridiculous yeah i feels like wherever we paid for justin herbert this year 
is basically where you could just slide in Joe Burrow there, like a top seven pick. Because it's like Joe Burrow was like the ultimate, you know, pick up in Superflex. Like, I think I even went Dak, Joe Burrow, and Scott Fish. And then I was I think I went Josh Allen Burrow in another league where I was like lucky to get him on the turnaround. So it's like, man, Joe Burrow is just one of those guys that's just going to constantly just stack up at his value. And as long as, you know, Jamar Chase is there, T. Higgins is there, and even Board, as long as that offense stays intact and Zach Taylor doesn't do some silly, aggressive things, you know, so at times that we saw this this season, I think Joe Burrow for the next 10 years is going to be in the same conversation as Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. Like, the new era is here, you know what I mean? And I feel like he's already talking, you know, like, big things. He's in the Super Bowl, for God's sakes, you know what I mean? Like, this is really, like, a conversation where it's like Joe Burrow needs to be, like, a top-five pick. LQ, you are the expert on the Rams. You have the check mark next to your name on Twitter. What are we doing with Cam Akers, my guy? <laughs> oh, man, Cam Akers, his, his ADP is rising just on him being Superman. You know, coming back from Achilles, and then it's like a, a crazy, you know, thought that, you know, he's still playing right now. Like, there's no type of, you know, basically drop off he's still playing at a high level so his ADP is going to be at a solid area to where like you could see him going in like the early second round late second round or whatever the case but it will be the second round based on the high power offense he's on a full offseason of rest and going into camp healthy I feel as though you know they're going to lean on him to be the guy like what they intended on going into the season so you're going to get a low end RB1 every single week we just need to see some touchdown from him but there's always going to be that worry in the back of your head with injuries and et cetera, et cetera, because he has been banged up but it's really the touchdowns where a lie of like how high his ADP will be, how high are we going to be, you know, praising him? Yeah. And no, I think you're right. And if you see uh, what happened this year with Stafford, 41 touchdown passes, I mean, Hey, mm, yeah, that's, yeah but boo, that's good. You like that. Uh, but the <laughs> offense has kind of transitioned a little bit from that Todd Gurley, getting the football, running it, getting 20 touchdowns to, I'm going to throw it to Cooper cup. I'm going to throw it to Robert Woods before he got yeah. hurt. Odell Beckham, uh, you know, even Higby. There's just a bunch of targets and they love to yeah. be able to do that. So uh, it is a little bit different. You're right. Those, those touchdowns do need to come. Uh, let's talk about somebody who, whose touchdowns came, and, and, and I'm not going to say we didn't call him breaking out, but Pete Overzet did say, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, watch out for Devin Singletary. It just took the last like four or five weeks of the season for it to come to fruition, but then it finally did. You know, he talked about having eight touchdowns. He rushed for over 100 yards twice. You know, he's got receptions too. I mean, became a PPR back. Uh, what are we doing, Devin Singletary? Was that for real? Is that going to happen again next year? Or is that just kind of the game script that they were in at the end of the season and kind of how it matchups to dictate? It's just weird that it took the back end of the season just for him to just crack 20 plus touches. And it's like, why? Why did you wait so long? And he needs rep. He needs like, you know, some type of like rhythm. He needs to have 15 to 20 touches per game to actually do something. And again, I've been preaching for the last few years about Josh Allen. Like I love when he runs. I love his playing style, but it's very dangerous. Like how much longevity are we going to get Josh Allen running around like crazy how he is before he takes a bump? And then now we're looking at Josh Allen on IR and they're with some backup and now they want to lean on Devin Singletary. So it's like, man, I definitely feel as though that back into the season was for real, but will it transition into next season? Are they in the running back market? Uh, it's like, I don't know. They just hired Aaron Cromer, you know, as the old line coach and he's done wonders. So that running game could be decent if Singletary takes ahead of it, but who knows if they're in the running back market. Yeah, and, and honestly, with Josh Allen, at any point, he can take over uh, a game. Yeah. And so not that Singletary uh, isn't hit or miss, but he's he's not always hit. So Josh uh, Allen running the ball eight to ten times is basically him about to take over. Just yeah. put Devin Singletary on the bench. I, I agree with you, though. You don't want to get uh, him Cam newton You know, yeah. That's what you don't want to have happen because he got his bell wrong a many a time. You know, and his shoulders and his chest and the Superman yep. vest and the whole thing. He'd get, he'd get destroyed, man. You're just like, what is that guy doing? You yeah, know? I thought he was a running back for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, you got, well, you know what? Uh, he was getting that money. So, uh, exactly. but yeah. Now, okay, I, I like it. You, you're, you're on the same wavelength. All right, but let's talk about a rising star. No one's ever heard of him. You know, he's an underperformer coming out of nowhere. Jamar <laughs> Chase. He drops um, everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jamar Chase, what, what do we do with him next year? How early are we drafting him? 
that's the million dollar question because honestly at this moment i don't know i feel as though you know he's either top three top four you know wide receiver off the board but at the same time like are we going to be buying in like full sending all chips in and i can see myself leaving the draft with him as my first wide receiver on my roster and be okay to build around that as long as that joe burrow and you know chase connections there and zach taylor doesn't get cute i'm all for it i don't see why not i i could see him going in the earlier rounds and you could be okay yeah here's the question if you have the choice right you're you're up against it justin jefferson or jamar chase Whew. chase chase, chase. I'm, 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 I can I'm, chase. I'm leaning justin jefferson but it's just because the vikings at times are so terrible that <laughs> their defense is so God, I just that they got to just chuck that son of a gun, right? So yeah. there's no one better downfield. They, they do these, you know, Kirk Cousins does these lollipop prayer million-dollar throws, and then, then there's just an uh, 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 open Justin Jefferson in the end zone. I'm like, what? Not again? How'd that happen? So, um, But I do think they're they're 1A and 1B uh, off of each other. I, I do love yeah. them both next year. You can get either one of them uh, wheels up. All right, let's talk about somebody who, uh, not sure what's going to happen, but Odell Beckham Jr. has kind of resurrected himself here, leaving Cleveland. I saw a beat report from Cleveland said that he had some answering to do about the mess he left behind. I just laughed. <laughs> and thought, man, how butt hurt is that guy? You know what I mean? So, uh, but but where is his place next year in, in fantasy and kind of in football? What happens? Where do you think he goes? Um, stick around? The, Rams, the Rams could bring him back. I mean, we're getting Jared Goff, Todd Gurley off the books. Uh, a couple other guys, Michael Brockers, I believe. So there's like almost $39 million available to where we can bring Odell Beckham back. Um, I don't think he's going to get top dollar, but there will be an offer. And I think, you know, he's at the point of his career where he wants to be happy where he plays. He wants to be used and, you know, confidence is back in his life. So I feel as though he's probably going to take whatever they give him. I don't think he's going to try to like hit them with a high ball or for him to even think he has a market out there. So it only makes sense that Oda Beckham remains a Ram. And I feel as though in drafts, he'll be like a fifth round pick and redraft or whatever the case may be. He'll be in that, you know, ballpark where we can get him T Higgins and uh, maybe even a Brandon Ayuk. He's coming back in ADPs apparently, but we're not even going to speak on him, but I feel like Odell Beckham, he's going to be utilizing the red zone heavy and we're already seeing it. We see the Odell Beckham fade and he scores. So it's one of those things where it's like automatic, but it will be interesting to see when Robert Woods comes back. How does this affect, you know, their target share? Like, who's going to be utilized this way and that way? But I definitely think if we're going to be talking about touchdowns outside of Cooper Cup, it will be OBJ. Because Robert Woods never was really a touchdown guy. He was more so of a possession, you know, PPR master. And that's what we love. But when it comes to touchdowns, I like guys that score touchdowns. We like our TDs, man. Yeah, you know, Robert Woods did get that, you know, once or twice a year jet sweep touchdown, which yeah. always added the stats. I, I yeah. did like that one. I'm not going <laughs> to complain. So, all right, I, I like it. We had a little bit of a Rams focus, but that's because we have a Rams expert here. I wanted to, to get it right uh, from the expert himself, right, which is how you work uh, your angles and get the best, you know, information available. So, all right, let's <laughs> jump in. We're going to talk about how this plays out. The Super Bowl, is this Super Bowl 50, what, 69 yet? I don't know. What what number is this? 53? 55. I don't know. I don't know. I I'm just I love them all, right? I'm into all the Super Bowl. Favorite number. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh I just I'm just making fun of Denny Carter, just let's be honest, you know. <laughs> so that guy, what a guy. Um, let's let's talk about this game. Uh you're a Rams uh just expert. You know, I'm not an expert in either team. I am uh officially though a, a Joe Burrow mark as of right now. I, I am all in on Joe Burrow. I love this guy. Um, I do think that the Bengals have a chance to win. Uh, I picked the Bengals uh, 24 to 21 over the Rams. I think there's a defensive touchdown for the Bengals. It's kind of the only way they're going to be able to, to keep it in a special team. Such on something's going to happen in, in that realm. Uh, you have it a little differently. Tell me how you think it's going to play out. Uh, 28, 17 Rams. Um, I think it's, it's like I said, I don't want it to be a blowout. It may be a blowout, but I think there's going to be a good game. We're going to be on the edge of our seat. So I'm going 28, 17 Rams. Yeah, and with that, the line right now is Rams four and a half. 
and uh, you have them well clearing it with the 11 points. Yeah. So you pick the Rams. Go Rams. I'm going the upset with the Bengals, right? So even if they Ooh, lose man. by four, yeah, you get a little bit of points there. So I'm picking them out right to win. So go Bengals. Uh, with that narrative, it can't be anybody but Joe Burrow being the MVP. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, who's your MVP? Uh, I'm going to go Matthew Stafford. If we're going to stick with narratives and storylines, it's it's a, you know, a comeback story for him. You know, he suffered in Detroit. You know, his first year as a Ram, he goes to the Super Bowl and win it. Oh, yeah, MVP for sure. Yeah, I'll be crying when him and Kelly Stafford are hugging on the field and their kids yeah. are there for sure. I'm not, <laughs> even, daughters not, are just, not yeah. even gonna pretend, man. I'm just gonna I'm crying on the Super Bowl Sunday. If Joe Burrow and, and Chase get in there, I'll be crying too, you know. So uh let's talk now the total. This is what the, this is what the people care about. This is the bets, right? Uh mm-hmm. where where is this game headed? Is it gonna go over 48 and hook? It's already kind of come down a little bit initially from from where it was uh, placed at, at the opening. Where's your money at? Uh, let's go the under let's go the under like i said it's gonna be a tough game man i'm, I'm gonna be grinding my teeth all four quarters and it's gonna be some exciting football it, it may be a defensive game honestly because the Bengals' defense doesn't suck i don't know why people keep saying that they don't suck they kicked it up in the postseason and obviously they made patrick mahomes struggle so we need to understand and analyze that game because patrick mahomes was not playing like patrick mahomes for a reason so that defense is not terrible so like i said we're expecting matthew stafford have an interception just one hopefully but i feel like it's going to be a tough game yeah, I, I'm with you. Interestingly enough, we both have our total at 45. We arranged uh, to get there at different paths, but <laughs> in the woods we meet at 45, uh, which I think will be a good game, a, a fun game, and then also halftime show, right? Oh, oh man. Finally. Yeah. This is going to be great. I can't finally, wait. Finally, finally going to have some people that I can relate to uh, for my <laughs> life. <laughs> You know, people I'm not relating to a couple of times ago. So uh, this is excellent. I'm really excited. Uh, a real deal. Where can people find you, follow you, uh, keep up to date with what you're doing now and then in the off season? You guys can find me at Real Deal Fantasy on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, maybe Twitch. I don't know. I'm, I'm everywhere, man. And you can catch me right in that downtown Rams. And of course, here at the Mayo Media Fire content only. Mm, I love it. Uh, I'm Nimble W Numbers on Twitter, nimblewnumbers.com. I'm taking a little break from Twitter, and uh, I'm still be around, but uh, I'm taking a little break. I'll probably be only producing uh, content for the Mayo Media Network in the next couple months, which is great because, you know, shout out. I love Pat. You know, I love Stepmom Lauren. I love everybody else here, LQ, Pete, people behind the scenes, amazing uh, every week. So uh, this is what I love to do. Uh, please sign up for, for uh, MMN, the Mayo Media Network on prize picks. Get your money. It's 100 bucks, right? Turn the 100 bucks into 1000 bucks. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. LQ, uh, have a great Super Bowl. And I do, for your sake, I do hope the Rams win and pull it out. Um, but if the Bengals do, you will not see any hate from me. All <laughs> love, man. I hope you have a great Super Bowl. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hopefully we win so I don't have to go under a rock for like two months. <laughs> no, I feel that. Everybody out there also have a great uh, Super Bowl. And if we don't see you in the offseason, have a great offseason. Thanks for choosing the Mayo Media Network and watching with us and enjoying football all season long. Peace.